You've never heard of the Millennium Falcon? It's the ship that made the Kessel run in less than 12 parsecs. We would be honored if you would join us. Hey, Star Wars fans and action figure collectors, just a little bit of a different video for today. It's a little bit of, it's about a month late. I wanted to do this back at the start of July. Um, I wanted to do my top five vintage collection figures so far for 2024. Um, usually I save a top 10 for the end of the year. So some of these may well make it depending on how many figures we get for the rest of the year. Um, in some aspects, it feels like this year has been a little bit of a slow start, but then we sort of get completely bombarded at once. So it may all balance out at the end of the year so we'll see but I've picked out five figures that have dropped so far in 2024 I'm looking forward to sharing these and going through one by one it's hasn't been a terribly difficult process trying to pick five um but yeah I've gone through with some of my favorites and uh let's just flip the camera around and take a look at what I've chosen all right so coming in at fifth place my top five vintage collection figures for 2024 so far we have Princess Leia Organa from A New Hope. This one has been very much needed for a very, very long time. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very happy with how this one turned out. Now, a lot of people aren't sort of super excited about the, the sort of the soft good, uh, the plastic, the lack of soft goods, should I say. Um... But for me, I'm I'm fine with it. I think it I don't think it doesn't hinder the sculpt at all. Um, and I, given that they have given her extra articulation, I dare say there could be a version of her with soft goods, so you can get her doing that sort of kneeling down in front of R two scene. Whereas this one, you can't really do that. Um, the addition of the sort of the draped down hood, and then the another swap out hood where you can actually have it up over her head is absolutely fantastic. And then using the, the Tantive 4 corridor, the back parts, you can actually have her sort of in the sort of the laneway down the background, down the back sort of, I don't know, maintenance tunnels, I guess. You can sneak her around in there. But yeah, really nice, really looking forward to having a new Luke, Han, and Ben Kenobi join her at some point in the next probably 6 to 12 months, hopefully. So yeah, she comes in at number five. Just going to move her to the back there. Coming in at number four. Now this one, I'm going with... I, I think this one's going to end up in my top ten at the end of the year. But number four, Count Dooku. Now this one I have customised a little bit. I've taken the, uh, the, old, the clasp off an older Dooku and sort of incorporate it into this one's cape. Um, I did like the soft goods. I wasn't, you know, I wasn't upset about the the sort of just the silver band that the hat that I had. And I thought, well, you know what, I've got an extra Dooku here, um, one that I couldn't find a place for in the collection on display because I've got four or five. Um, so I decided, no, nah, this one's going to get a sacrificial cape, and uh, yeah, I'm going to. I decided to give that clasp to this Dooku. Um, it is fixed on, so this cape's not coming off anymore. Um, so I am going to get a second version of this Dooku to have without a cape. Well, I don't know that I necessarily need one. He doesn't often take it off. So I, I'm very, very happy with Dooku. He was another one long time coming. And uh, yeah, I think Hasbro really nailed this one. Like the, the two-tone soft goods for the cape, the cut of it over the shoulders sort of sits really nicely. Very nice. I have him currently dueling with Anakin on my Revenge of the Sith shelf. That is one little thing I've just come across is that the lightsaber is a little bit loose in the hand, but uh, not terrible at all so there is number four count dooku let's move him to the back as well now coming in at number three this one yeah i don't see many of these not coming into my top 10 at the end of the year but again we'll see technically deluxe but garazeva relios you know i'm not 
going against the deluxe sort of the quote unquote deluxe figures they are part of the vintage collection so i'm going to include them um yeah zeb oh, this one is an absolute cracker yeah big big time you know favorite it's hard to go it was hard to find two figures to top this one honestly um i have done it obviously because this is one that's coming in a third um but yeah I'm looking forward to the other version of Zeb that's going to come with the Ghost. And at this point, I think I've decided I will be opening all those figures uh, that do come with the Ghost. Uh, I've just, I have no idea where I'm going to put the damn thing. <laughs> so I may not be opening them straight away until I found a nice little home or a table or something for the Ghost. Um, I do have a little coffee table here in my room. And that might get swapped out for something, you know, that will house the Ghost a little bit, a little bit better. Then I can open it up and display it with all the characters and have a nice little rebel shelf. So yeah, Zeb is absolutely fantastic. Big time fan of this figure. So he comes in third place. Coming in second is one that I was really, really excited about and I'm, I'm glad to have him in the collection. Not a perfect figure by any stretch, but Django Fett. Did he need to be a deluxe release? Absolutely not. <laughs> um, and yeah, everyone's got their small little gripes with it. You know, everyone wanted a lot of people wanted the removable helmet and the you know the head, but I'm for the swap out heads. I'm I'm of the swap head side of things. And the uh, the holsters, people. You know, that's probably the other gripe people have. They, they do look a little big. But, you know, for a functioning, functioning, you know, holsters for his blasters, it it's good. I'm okay with it. It's fine. And I love the this classic, classic stance. Like, like the 2002, I think it was the sneak preview Django. Or maybe it was one of the others from 2002. And he sort of came posed like this. And now we've got the articulation so you can get him in this sort of very classic pose. I'm, I'm going to suggest that we're going to see Django again with his other jetpack. Because he does have the other, the other jetpack when he's dueling with Obi-Wan on Kamino. And this is the one he uses on Geonosis. So it's not out of the realm of possibility. We'll see another one, maybe with a poncho. You know, maybe not completely armoured up, maybe just in his civilian gear, who knows. But he doesn't need to be... Doesn't need to be deluxe at all. But, you know, just the finish on it, the shine of the silver. You know, it's not... Vac metal doesn't need to be. I don't think his armour really was sort of that shiny. But it's got a nice sheen to it. I mean, you can sort of see that light sort of flashing across the chest and across the top of the helmet. I really like the... I really like Django Fett. So he's number two. So yeah, rounding out my top five vintage collection figures so far in 2024. This one... I have not been able to put this one down since I got it. Well, technically, yes, I have put it down. But because I've got to do things like go to, go to sleep and shower and go to the bathroom and stuff like that. Kanan Jarrus. Never thought this one would blow me away like this one has. Um, yeah, I feel like they've just captured this one magnificently. I'm doing a bit of a Rebels rewatch at the moment. I'm about halfway through season two. And Kanan is just absolutely such a great character. And just the look of this guy, I still remember back, you know, 2014, when Rebels first hit. We started getting all those teasers. We got a little bit of a tease for the, the, the Cowboy Jedi. He certainly felt that way early on. You know, sort of taking a little bit of... A little bit of Ram Coda, a little bit of um, Quinlan Vos, perhaps. You know, the Jedi with a gun. If you all know that storyline from the old legends. And yeah, I'm really, 
was really hoping for a reveal just at San Diego Comic Con of maybe a season one Ezra Bridger to go with him. Sort of slowly ticking off all the all the revels in TVC. But yeah, Kanan has come out on top seven months into the year. You know, this this lineup was pretty much the same at the start of the month anyway, so we are here at the end of July. We've got five months of the year left to go. See what see what Hasbro can uh, can give us and get out there for the rest of the year. And there's a few few figures from the Acolyte due out in the coming month or or two. And some more four packs and bits and pieces. Some cool reveals at San Diego for next year. But yeah, that rounds out my top five. Kanan Jarrus, Django Fett, Zabarellius, Count Dooku, and Princess Leia. I'd love to hear what yours are for so far this year. Drop a comment down below. Let me know what you think. How would you make your top five so far? And uh, yeah, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And we'll see you again very soon. Until then, may the force be with you always.